This week for our final topic, I want to take you through building a an example app. I want to build another web app and I want to use some dynamic data uh, network requests and I want to show you how to build applications that can change. So uh, in your final assignment you've been building a store and it's not hard to imagine having a store where the products change frequently and you add new things, you remove new things, product prices change, things go on sale, etc. And you need to have the ability to update all of that. And how do we make this happen? So we're going to talk about a set of techniques that allows us to separate the data for an application from the web, the JavaScript CSS and HTML that's going to present it. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go through and take a look at the readings for week 12. And I'm going to talk about a lot of the things that are in here, but I'm not going to go through it line by line. So a good thing to do before you begin this would be to have a look through these readings. But uh, I'll talk to you about what I want to build. So I want to play with an API called the dog API. And it's a... It's an API that's built out of a data set that Stanford uses for accessing um, different dog breeds and they use it for training machine learning models and so on. And so they need, they need large lists of dogs based on uh, different breeds and then they need images of it. So what I want to build is I want to build this web app and I'm going to focus on building it for mobile. So I, what I want it to be able to do is I want to be able to click and choose from a list of all of the possible dog breeds that the Stanford API knows about. And then I want it to automatically fill in the main part of my application with pictures of those dog breeds. So we're going to have to use the dog API in a number of ways in order to get this to work. And so I want to, I'll, I'll take you through it and show you how it works. So. I've got a shell here and I've put this up on GitHub for you to download and play with. And you can you can try and write this along with me just to get some practice at it. Let me take you through some of the things that are in here. I'm not gonna talk about all aspects of this because I really wanna focus on the dynamic pieces. But once again, I'm gonna be using the bootstrap components and just to make things go a little bit faster. So I've included the bootstrap CSS and at the bottom of my file, I also have a bunch of JavaScript that is required by Bootstrap, and so it's being loaded in. So this page is going to be built using classes um, provided, by, provided by Bootstrap. So if you take a look at what I've got here, essentially what I have is across the top, I have a nav bar. And inside the nav bar, I have a place where my uh, my branding is or where the title of my app is. And I also have a drop down where users can choose from a list of dogs. And then I have here, I have a grid. And this grid is where I'm going to place um, rows and columns of dogs. And I'm just going to focus on doing one. So I want it to basically fill as much of the available space as possible. So what we have over here, if you take a look at the body, um, the components that I'm using, and if you want to read more about them, I'm using the navbar component. And so a navbar looks like this thing here. And you can see my code for the navbar is right here. Okay, and inside the navbar, I have a place for the title of my app and I have a place for the dropdown. So one of the things that we already see that's going to be necessary is in my dropdown, I need all of the dog breeds. So there are, you know, the, the dog API has all kinds of breeds, hounds, huskies, schnauzers, whatever. There's all kinds of different uh, dog breeds that we want to populate in here. So what I need is inside of my dropdown, I need to create a link for every single one of the dog breeds that I want to display. And so they all need to, they all need to look like this. Um, but I don't want to type that out manually. I want to pull that data in from the server and I want to present it in this spot right here. So I've left it open, but basically what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to 
populate within my drop-down menu in this div, I'm going to have to create um, anchors for all of these different uh, dog breeds. And I'm going to have to make it so that when I click, uh, I can process that particular dog breed. Okay, so that's the top. That's the nav bar at the top here. Below that, what I have is I have a container. And the container is allowing me to just fill this space left to right. So it manages making this everything fit nicely. And inside that, I have two things. The first thing I have is I have a place to put the name of the dog breed. Currently, I have nothing in there. So you'll notice that I want to put nothing in there, but still have something. So I'm saying I have a non-breaking space, which is another way of saying put nothing in here, but it doesn't have it be completely empty. There is something there. But that's where I'm going to want to put the name of my dog breed. And then below that, I have the area where all the pictures are going to go. And right now, what I've done, just to give you a sense of what it's going to need to look like, is I've created one cell in our grid. So I have a div that's going to hold all of the cells. And here's how I'm defining a cell. A cell is a row. And inside the row, we have a column. And inside the column, we have an image. And the image is going to use a URL that we're going to get back from the dog API. So just to show you what I mean, if I was to ask the dog API for a list of hound images, so for a particular breed, hound dogs, what it would do is it would send me this list of URLs. I'm going to show you how this works in a minute, but this is the this is the format of what I'm going to get. And I essentially want to create one of these cells, this whole chunk of HTML. I'm going to want to, in a loop, I'm going to want to create one of those for each one of the dogs that I want to display. So I've put one up here just to give you a sense. So I pulled this as an image, this uh, dog that I'm using here. This came from the dog API and I'm displaying it in my application like this and I'm doing a few things with um, Bootstrap has some nice tools for doing responsive images and they give you a way to stretch an image so it'll fill the available space and you can do things like you can round the corners and, and so on. And so I've done a bunch of those things in, um, in, in our code, just using the classes that exist inside Bootstrap. So if you want to know more about this, you can have a look at the uh, documentation for Bootstrap, but I'm basically using their classes to try and style this so I don't have to focus so much on um, getting the styling to work. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's talk for a second about how you use this, uh, how you use this API. So, so far, what we've been doing is we've been using um, websites where when you go to a URL, you get something that looks like this. You get a web page. But what we're going to start looking at now is we're going to start looking at URLs that give you data instead of giving you something that is meant for a person. It's meant for a program. So it's a way to send data to another uh, application. So just to show you what I mean, I'm going to copy this URL. The this is this is the dog API, and you'll see it says slash breeds slash list slash all. Now if I open up a new tab and I paste this in, I get this. So what you're seeing here is the raw data that's coming back from the API. It hasn't been formatted in any way. It's just a hunk of data. And if you look at it closely, what you're going to notice is that it looks a lot like a JavaScript object. So when we wrote our object literals, we started out with a curly brace and we ended with a curly brace. And in between, we had keys. Like, for example, this one starts out with a key of message, and then there's a colon, and then what comes after that is the value. So what you're looking at here is called JSON. And it is a data format that comes, it's based on JavaScript uh, literal notation for objects. So it does indeed look familiar to what we have here. So our goal right now is I want to be able to get this data 
into my web app and I want to be able to process it because all the, the names of the different uh, types of dogs, they're all in here, right? So uh, Pointer is in here and Pitbull is in here and all the rest of them, Wolfhound, but I need that data to be inside of, inside of my application, okay? So let's, let's start writing a little bit of code to, to make this possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw another script block at the bottom of my page here. And I'm going to write just a little bit of code in here. And then I'm going to break out into other files once we get going. So I'm going to say, when my window loads, I want to call the start function. So we're going to write a function start. And this is where our program will begin. So the very first thing that I want to be able to do, step one, is I want to get all of the uh, dog breed so that I can work with them. So I'm going to write a function, get dog breeds like that, okay? And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be going and making a request of the network. So in JavaScript and on the web, whenever you need to do something with a remote resource, it could be the network, it could be a device, it could be, it's something where we don't want to, we don't want to block our code and not allow the code to continue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this function, get dog breeds, I'm going to give it another function inside it. And I'm going to say that once we get those dog breeds, I want to do something with the list of dog breeds that comes back. So let me explain this pattern a little bit so that um, it makes a bit more sense. Now you've actually seen something like this in the past, so I want you to think about what this code does. If I said to you, for example, uh, document dot on or dot add event listener, click function event. So let's think about what this code is doing right here. We're saying that the document object, we're calling add event listener, and we're, we're calling this function and we're passing it two arguments. The first argument that we pass it is the name of the event that we want to, we want to listen for, in this case, the click event. And the second argument is what we call a callback function. So this is a function that's going to be invoked or it's going to be called when the click event happens on the document. So why do we write our code this way? We don't know when this code should be called. So we aren't actually going to call this code. We're asking the document to call this code whenever the user clicks on it. So this is a very common pattern in JavaScript where you have a function, in this case, add event listener, and what you do is you give it another function that you want to run in the future. When something happens, I want to run this function. So we call this a callback function. So I could say that this is a callback, I could name it, but I don't actually need to give it a name here because the calling function is going to have access to it. And I'll show you what that means in a second. Here, when you're finished getting the list of dog breeds, call this function and give me the give me that list give me an array of those dog breeds and what i'm going to do first of all is i'm just going to print them out so i'm going to say console.log breed list like that okay so that's our high level code now we have to write more to make this work. Now to keep things from getting too uh, difficult to follow, I'm going to split things up into a couple of files. So we've got the bootstrap files here and I'm going to create some more files. So these are going to be uh, helper functions that we're going to write. So the first one I'm going to work with is I'm going to make a file called api.js, or I'll call it dog, I'll just say api, api.js. These are functions that are going to be related to working with the dog API, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new file called api.js. 
API.js is where I need to write this function to, um, to get the dog breeds. So that's what we're going to do. Function get dog breeds. It takes one argument, a callback function. So this is this is what our this is the code that we're going to where we're going to talk to the dog API. So let's go look at what the dog API looks like here. So somehow I need to be able to download this data from the server from this other server, from the dog API server at this URL. Well, how do we do this? I can't, I've already loaded this URL. I'm already sitting on this web page, wherever this, this site is loaded. How do I load another page into this page? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a, a piece of the web platform called XML HTTP request. So let me walk you through how we're gonna use this. We're gonna say let XHR is equal to new XML HTTP request. Now this thing has a weird name, but essentially what what it's what it's for, it's for doing network requests. So it's going to allow me to talk to other servers or my own server while a web page is loaded and I don't have to reload the page. So this is a critical thing that you need in web programming because if you're building something like an email application or you're building something like Twitter or Facebook or um, something that, uh, like a music service, you need to be able to get new data from the server all the time. So the user loads the page and then they need to be able to update it, get new updates or get more data. So what we're going to do is we're going to define a new XHR or a new XML HTTP request. So this object, how do we use it? So we're going to, I'll skip over it to the end for a second. We're going to say, we're going to define a URL that we want to use. And the URL that we want to use is equal to, well, it's right here. So the dog API tells us that if you want to get all of the dog breeds, you have to go to this URL. So I'm going to just paste that in. That's the URL right there. We're going to take our XML HTTP request and we're going to call the open method. And the open method takes a couple of things. The first one is, how do you want to make this request? So you know from working with forms that we have a number of ways that we can do HTTP requests. We can do get, we can do post, uh, we can do delete, we can do etc. There's all different ones that we can, we can work with. In this case, I want to do a get request because I want to download data from that server. So I'm going to ask to do a get request. And I'm going to say that I want to do a get request to the URL that I just defined on line four. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell the XHR to send this request to the server. So in other words, please download, please get the data that's at this URL. That's what this says. Okay, now you'll notice that it doesn't say uh, let data equals, I don't do that. So how does this work? The thing here is I need to go and do a network request in the background and I don't want to block the rest of my web page. I want my web page to still keep working. So if the user does something, I want the page to not be locked up. So I have to be careful about how I write this code. And the way that XHR allows us to do this is similar to something else that we've seen. So remember, let me just go down here for a second. Consider this code. Uh, let image equals document.create equals function. Um, image dot source equals so we've seen code like this before in assignment four when you were loading the flags for the countries you created an image and then you set the source for the image like so but you needed to know when the image was finished loading and so you use the onload event handler in order to do this. If we go back to our main page over here, look at what's happening right here. Window.onload equals start. So I'm connecting a function to the onload event of this object. And that's the same thing that you're doing in the same thing that you're doing over here too with an image. Okay? 
So I want to do something similar with my XHR. I'm going to say XHR.onLoad equals function. And I'm also going to do XHR.onError equal function. So this is if the XHR request works, and this is if the XHR request fails. Okay, so let's get rid of this. We don't need this. So we're going to say open up a request and send it, and we want to get this data. And when it's done, it's either going to work and we're going to get the on load event, or it's going to fail and we're going to get the on error. So if it works, then what I want to do, this is what the data is going to look like. It's going to look like this right here. It's going to be um, a big hunk of JSON. So I'm going to say let JSON is equal to uh, this dot response text. So when I say this, I'm referring to the XHR object. So it's, I'm saying when this thing is finished loading, get the response text off of this. So whatever the server responded with, this is the thing that I want to grab. Okay. And say console.error unable to get dog breed JSON. Okay, now I need to do more here in this function, but let's pause there for a second. So we've got enough of, of it working right now that I should be able to invoke my callback. So remember, the way that this code works, I'm saying get the dog breeds, get the dog breeds, and when you're done getting the dog breeds, run this function right here. I want to print out whatever it gets sent back to me. So over in this function here, I have a reference to the callback. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to invoke the callback. I'm going to say callback JSON like that. So that this thing says when this thing is finished loading the request, it's going to get the text of the response and it's going to do a callback and send it in like so. So I'm going to save this and let's have a look at what, what's going on over here. Let me refresh the page. Take a look at my console here. Do you see what's happened? It has now printed out all of this response back from the server. So this is good. This, this is working. But the form that it's in is not usable to me because what I really want is I really want to get, I want to get the data that is inside of this and I want to start working with it as a JavaScript object. Right now it's a string. It's just a piece of text. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to try and parse this text and work with it. So you have to be careful whenever you're going to parse JSON, it's possible that it'll fail. So if you give if you give some kind of JSON like if I was um, here if I said just as an example if I said json.parse um I got to try and think of what would be uh, invalid. So let's just do this. If that would that would be invalid JSON, unexpected end of JSON input. So you can see that I didn't close my brace, and so it didn't work. And what happens is it throws an error. So whenever you're going to parse JSON, you always want to be careful to wrap it in a try catch block, like so. And I'm going to say um, that I want to take this line of code and I'm going to say let data equals json.parse this response.txt. So I'm going to take the string of text that was sent to me and I'm going to turn it into a full JavaScript object. And what I'll do is I will, if it works, I'll call my callback with the data like that. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to print out another error. Console.error 
unable to parse breed JSON, and I'll just give a reference to the error so we can see it. So let's try this. I'm going to save this. Over here, you can see that I've got something new. Inside my console, you can see that instead of having a string, what I now have is I have a JavaScript object. The JavaScript object looks exactly like what I'm expecting. So it's an object that has a message property, and the message property has an object with all of the different breeds. And then if I go all the way down to the bottom, there's one other property called status, and it says this was a successful call. So what I really want is I want to grab everything inside of message. I want all of these. So let's modify our code slightly. And instead of working with uh, data, the whole object, I'm going to say dot message. So I'll save that. And now you'll see that what I have over here is I have just what was inside the message. I have an object. It has all of these key value pairs. And each one of these keys is the name of a breed. OK, that's interesting. So what I want to do is I I really want to just get the, um, I, I just want to get these names, the key names. And there's a way to do that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, use object dot keys. And then I'm going to give it the uh, data dot message like that. So what this code is doing is it's going to um, like so. So let's save this and have a look. OK, so now what do I have? Now I've got an array of the breeds. OK? So I'm passing back all of the breed names. So this is good. This function now works. I, I've gotten all of the dog breeds, and I pass it back out to the top level to my uh, to my main my main function. So let's go back here and figure out what to do with this. So we don't want to do this right now. We're saying console.log, and we're just printing this out. What I would really like to do is I'd like to call another function. I'd like to populate my breed drop down with the breed list like this. Now, I haven't written this function yet, but essentially what I want is I want it to put all of those breeds into a list here that I can see. So step two is going to be um, use the breed list to create a drop down. So let's make another file. I'm going to call this file ui.js. And inside ui.js, I'm going to put all the functions that I need for working with the DOM. And in here, I'm going to use these functions. So right now, populate breed dropdown doesn't work. So we need to go and uh, I need to write I need to write the code for this. So let's just look at our HTML for a second so you can see what has to happen. My drop down is here. This is the drop down that I want to populate. And essentially, what I need to do is I need to fill in children underneath this div. So I'm going to have to get the drop down menu and I'm going to have to populate all of these links so that they can uh, essentially, so that they're, they're all clickable. So why don't I just copy this right here? I'll copy this code so you can see what's happening in the other over in ui.js. So here's the HTML that I'm going to basically be working with. OK, so the first function I need to deal with here is function populate breed dropdown. And it's going to take in a list of breeds, so an array of breeds, like so. So the first thing I need to do is I need to get this drop-down menu. So I'm going to say let drop-down menu, and I'm going to pull it out of the DOM using query selector.
get my drop down menu. And then what I need to do is I need to write a loop that goes through all of the breeds. So I'm going to say breeds dot for each. And I'm going to say for each of these breeds, run the following function. So what do we need to do in here? We essentially need to create one of these anchor tags for each one. So I'm going to say let drop down item. We're going to create a new anchor element. And it needs an ID. So I'm going to put the name of the breed on the ID. So I'll say put the breed there. I need to set this class name. I need to set an href. And I'm actually not wanting it to go anywhere, so I'm going to use hashtag so that it doesn't try to navigate away to a different page. And finally, I need to put the text inside, so I need the breed name to go in here. So one thing I could do is I could put the breed name here, but the problem, uh, this isn't perfect because I actually would like the breed name. So if I have a breed name like hound, what I really would like is I'd like for it to be capitalized. So I'd like it to look like that. So let's write a little function here um, called title case. And it takes a piece of text. So if you give me something like hound, I'm going to give you back hound like that. I'm going to capitalize the first letter. So I'm going to return the text that you give me. I'm going to take the first letter and I'm going to turn it into uppercase. And then I'm going to take all of the rest of the letters by slicing them starting at position one. So first letter is uppercase and then every letter after that is, is going to be lowercase. If you, if you wanted to, you could say to lowercase just to make sure they're all lowercase. So down here, I'm going to use that function. I'm going to say title case on the breed name like so. So after I build this thing, the last thing I want to do is I want to add to the drop down menu. So I'm going to take my drop down menu and I'm going to append child this drop down item like so. Okay, let's see if that works. I'm going to save this and over here, if I click on this menu now, you can see that I have all of my dog breeds. So this is really good. So I have all of them, you can see that it's in title case. If I inspect these, so you can see in the DOM that what I have is I have an anchor, the ID is Australian, the class is drop down item, href equals hash sign, and then I have title case for the name of the, the item here. So this is perfect. This is exactly what I need to do. Okay, so let's think about this. So we've created our list but clicking on this doesn't do anything. So probably the next thing we need to do is we need to figure out when the, <clears throat> after we create this, um, this menu, what are we gonna do next? So number three, um, we need to listen for clicks on the drop-down menu items. Okay, so I have a couple of ways I could do this. I could, put a click handler on each and every one of these, but there's a lot of them. Like I think it was 94. What I can do is I can put my click event handler on the parent element on the drop down menu itself. And then whenever somebody clicks on one of these, I will get an event that will bubble up to me. So let me show you what the code for this would look like. I'm going to grab my drop down 
menu here again. And I'm going to take that drop down menu and I'm going to add an event listener for the click event. And when the click event happens, I'm going to run a function. So inside this function, what I need to know is I need to know which one of these menu items was actually clicked. Well, the nice thing about an event is the event tells you exactly which one was clicked because you can say let drop down item equals event dot target. So the target is the element that caused the event to get dispatched into the DOM. So when someone clicks on an anchor element, that's the target. That's the thing that actually caused it. So even though the event is going to bubble up to the parent, I can still get access to it here on, on the target. And for each one of these, you'll notice over here that we put the name of the breed on the ID. So why don't we get the breed name off of the ID? I'm going to say let breed is equal to drop down item dot ID. And for starters, why don't I just print it out? Console.log breed clicked, and then I'll print out whatever the breed was. Okay, so I'm going to save this, go back to my console, watch the console here. I'm going to click on one of the, the dogs. So whichever one I click on, it's going to register that I clicked on that particular dog. Okay, so what I need to do now instead of just saying this is the dog that was clicked, I need to go and I need to access another part of the dog API. So I need to go and ask it to give me all of the images for that breed. So the way this works is I'm going to use the dog API, but I'm going to call one of the routes and I'm going to pass it the name of the breed. So in the case that we're looking at here, you can see that it's using hound. What I want to do is I want to, I want to work with whatever it is, Australian or bulldog or whatever. And depending on what I put here, it's going to return back to me a JSON list that's going to have all of these different URLs. So what I really would like to do is step four, I would like to, um, get the list of images for this breed from the dog API. So I'm going to write another function, which doesn't exist yet, but I'm going to say, get me the breed data for what? Well, I want the breed data for this breed that was just clicked. So I know the breed that was just clicked because I have it right here. And when you are done getting me that data and processing that data, I want you to call this function and pass me a list of all of the images, all the URLs that I need to work with. Okay, so for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a console log in here and I'm going to log the images like so. So we need to write this function, get breed data. Get breed data needs to go inside of our API code here. So get breed data is a function. It takes a breed and it also takes a callback function. And what does it need to do? So we're going to have to we're going to have to basically call we're going to do something very similar to what we just did above here. In fact, I'm just going to copy and paste this to make this go a little bit faster and we'll modify the pieces that need to be different. So step one, we need to create a new XML HTTP request. When I'll skip to the bottom, we need to load the URL for the images for this particular breed. So I'm going to copy this URL and let's take a look at this.
Now the problem here is this is for, this is what you would get if you wanted all of the images for a hound. But what I want is I want to use the breed information that was passed into the function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this into a template literal string so that instead of writing hound here, I'm going to pass in the name of the breed. So I'm just I'm going to use whatever breed the user has requested. Okay? And it's I know that it's going to be the correct breed because it's the one that's coming from the dropdown, which is coming from the API that we're working with. Okay, so we're going to create a URL for the breed images. We're going to open a request and we're going to send it. And then if it works, we're going to run the code on line 29, this function. If it fails, we're going to run the code on line 40. So let's just update our error messages. Unable to get dog breed image JSON, unable to parse breed image JSON. Okay, so the first thing that's going to happen is the data is going to come back and we're going to get the data. We're going to parse the JSON data that comes back on the response text and we're going to store it in this data object. And then according to the data that's over here, the object is going to have a message property and the message property is going to be an array. It's going to be an array of images. Therefore, I don't need to do this object.keys We need to take that list and we need to process it into something um, on screen. So instead of console logging this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call another function. This is going to be step five. Step five is going to be um, show the breed and the images to the screen, into the web page. So update our web page with the breed title and create images. So we need to write another function. We need this show breed function to exist. Okay, so let's hop over into our UI code and let's write another function. So function show breed takes the name of a breed and an array of images. And okay, so let's think about what our HTML needs to do here. I'm going to grab this HTML here so that we can look at it in the other file. So over here, this is what we're looking at right here. Okay, so the first thing that I want to deal with is I want to deal with putting the name of the breed into my heading, my heading two, because <clears throat> I want to be able to see what breed I clicked on. So I want to update the breed title in my page. So I'm going to grab the breed name from the DOM. It would be nice if this was title case. So up above, we wrote this function to do the conversion for us. So I'm going to reuse that function down here as well. So I'm going to say title case breed, like so. <clears throat> and that should work. Let's just see if that piece works. I'm going to save that. I'm going to click on a breed. And Oh, I haven't saved my main page. Save this page. I'm going to click on a breed and I get the breed title. I'm going to click on another one. I get that title. This one, I get that title. So that's working beautifully. So the only thing I, I haven't done is I haven't done anything with these images. Okay, so what do we need to do? I need to, I need to clear the existing images from our breed grid. So right now I just have a single image in there, a placeholder, and I need to clear it out. So this div, this breed grid, I want to delete everything that's inside it. So I'm going to say let breed grid 
I'm going to grab this from the DOM. And I'm going to set its, <clears throat> excuse me, inner HTML to be equal to the empty string. I'm just going to wipe it out. There's nothing, so there's nothing in there. Let's see if that works. Save this. Click a dog breed, Australian. Yep, that works. Click another one. That works. Okay, good. All right, now for the next part. So the next part is I want to take these images and for each image that I have, I'm going to basically have an image URL. And I want to work with this, uh, I want to work with this image URL and I want to create, basically what I need to do is I need to create this structure right here. So what do we need? I need a div with a div inside it with an image inside that. Okay, so let's, let's just write a bunch of functions to do this. Okay, so the first one I need is I need to make this row right here. So I'm going to I'm going to write a function that does this function row and the row has uh, children inside it or a child. Let's say the, the note the this has a child inside it like that. Okay, so I'm going to have a function which takes a child and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a row and I'm going to set the rows uh, class name to be equal to the CSS classes that we have there. Whoops. And I'm going to append the child to the row. And I'm going to return the row. So that's the row. The column is identical. The column looks like this. So let's make another one for a column. Um, we need to append the child that's been passed to me and we need to return the column back again. Okay, and then the last thing we need is we need this image. So basically the same same kind of code again. The only difference is this time an image only takes a URL. So I'm going to have make an image function. It takes a URL and I'm going to say let image equals one of the neat things with images you can you can just use the image constructor if you want instead of saying document.createElement. element. So I'll do that just for something different. And I'm going to say image my class name is equal to all of this. And the source is equal to the URL that's being passed to me. And then I'm going to return my image. Okay. Okay. So now let's use all of that. So I want you to look at this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write a function that creates a row with a child inside it with an image inside that. Okay, so it's like a, a Russian nesting doll. You've got these multiple layers of things all going on inside them. So I've already got these functions written. So I have one more function. Function, let's call this create grid cell. And it takes, you pass me a URL and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to return a row. So what's inside the row? Well, what's inside the row is a column. What's inside the column? An image. And what does the image take? A URL. Like that. So I've just 
been able to break my break my HTML down into a series of small functions. Each one of these functions is pretty easy to understand on its own. And but I can compose those functions together and I can wrap them all up so that they produce the end result. I can create a grid cell. So what I'm going to be producing is this whole thing right here like that. Okay, let's use it. So what I've got here is I'm going to say images dot for each take each image URL. And what do I want to do? I want to create a grid cell from that URL, which is going to make a row and a column and an image. And then what do I do with that? Well, I have to take that thing and I need to append it to my breed grid. I want to put it in the breed grid. So I'm going to say breed grid dot append child like that. Okay, so loop through all the image URLs, create a row column image and append to our grid. There's the code. Does it work? Let's save it and try it. So I click on a breed and I get an error. URL is not defined. Now this is useful because a lot of people have been reaching out to me and they get stuck on a bug and they don't know how to solve it. So something like this pops up and you're like, well, what's going on here? So there's a lot of information in this. It says that you can see I have a call stack. It says api.js URL is not defined. So I can click on this line of code. You can see that this line of code was called from ui.js line 104, which was called from this code, which was called from this code. And you can see the whole flow of the data. So I'm going to click on api.js 35 and it's going to take me right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set a breakpoint here. So I'm going to click on line number 35 and I'm going to refresh my page to run the code again. I'm going to click on one of these and you can see that it's about to hit the error right here. Okay. Now what I'm interested in is I'm interested over here on the side. I'm interested in this call stack because you can see my code going all the way from this function up through this function, up through up to this function here. Okay. All the way through and it's, it's having problems here. So what is the error that we're getting? So if we if we go back to the sources, if I let this run, if I hover over this and let this go, you'll see that the error is unable to parse breed image JSON reference URL is not defined in API 35 in UI.js 104. So the real problem here is that URL is not defined and you can see the problem right here is that I've said loop through all my images and create image URL and then over here you see that I forgot to call it image URL I called it URL. In fact, you can see that my editor is even trying to help me. Do you see how this do you see how this is light gray? It says this is declared but its value is never read because I've never used it. So that's a bug. Image URL like so. Let's save this and try again. I'm going to get rid of that breakpoint because I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to let this code run. So I'm going to choose a dog. And there it is. It works. Let's choose another dog. Uh, Bull Terrier. So I've got all pictures of Bull Terriers. Let's choose another dog. I don't even know what some of these dogs are. Cockapoo. Only two of those, <laughs> uh, but they all work. Corgi. And you can see that this is nicely um, spacing everything. The responsive images are all working. What's neat about this, let me just open up my network tab. Let me clear this and refresh the page so you can see what's going on. So you can see right here, I'm going to tell it that I only want to see um, XHR requests in my network tab. So you can see that it's requesting all of the data. If I click on this, you can see that the response is coming back with all of the data that I'm requesting in order to build this list. If I click on a dog breed, 
you can see that it does a request to the images and it loads in all of these images and that's what's being used to populate all the data over here right every time I click on one of these it does a call an XHR call to get it and you can also see if I open this up you'll be able to see it loading all of the images. See all these images being loaded? So it's loading hundreds and hundreds of images in order for this timeline to work so that we can see you know, all the things that are going on with this dog. So this, what's nice about this is that at each level, everything's pretty small. So this is the main, this is my main code right here. You know, it gets the dog breeds, it populates the drop down list, it listens for click events, and then whenever they click on something, it loads the breed information and shows it in the page. My API code is pretty small. We could actually make this even smaller because there's a lot of repetition here. If we wanted to, we could uh, refactor this so that we only had, we had two small functions that call one larger function. My UI code is also pretty small. Um, I've, I've written a bunch of code to help me do little things like make things uppercase, um, create menu items, populate menu items in order to create my rows and columns and images and so on, loop through all my images and, and be able to put it together. So all of these techniques are covered in the notes for this week and they're super powerful. So you're going to go on in your other courses and you're going to learn how to build web servers and you're going to build how to how, you're going to learn how to build really powerful front end clients to be able to consume APIs that you create or APIs that somebody else creates and you want to be able to pull that data together. So take advantage this week of just starting to think about how you make more and more dynamic web applications and how we can use some of the things uh, like uh, Ajax, XHR, and so on to be able to pull that data together.